Okay, so um, this will be our third of three videos uh, that uh, look at um, just kind of our sequences in general and start to think about the terms adding them up as a series. Okay, so um, so example six is where we have uh, left off. And it says, uh, determine whether the series converges or diverges. And so far, again, just as a recap, so far, if we want to know a series converging, right now we only have um, two things, right? If, if we know something about their partial sums, um, if the partial sums themselves converge, then we know um, that, that the series converges. Or if we know it's a geometric series um, whose common ratio has an absolute value is less than one, then we also know that it converges. And that's all we have. Um, and then really kind of moving forward, that's what we're going to um, be building is like different ways to analyze the behavior of those infinite series. So uh, this one right here, um, you know, so example six, part A. So it, it looks maybe a little bit more intimidating than it needs to be. We can, we can um, rearrange this and make it look more like a geometric sequence like we're used to. Um, and so that's going to help us analyze that a little bit more. So n equals zero to infinity of six times, and then two to the n plus one. Let's think of that as two time two to the n times two, or two times two to the n, right? Because like, because like, if there was one and you had n of them, then together you'd have n plus one of them. And then three to the two n. That's the same thing as nine to the n, because three squared is is nine. And so really, I can think about that as n equals zero to infinity, uh, group the six times two, so that's 12. And that is really just like two ninths to the n. And those are identical uh, series, but it's much clearer and much more obvious that it now converges because of my ratio uh, is uh, less than one. And not only does it converge, I can actually find its sum. So anytime you can find the sum, uh, we definitely know it converges. Um, and that's actually going to be quite a commodity uh, that like uh, like most of the things this chapter, this is going to be weird to say, but most of the things this chapter, we're not going to have, uh, we're not going to be able to actually add it up. We can make it, we can make um, a proof that it converges to something, uh, but we may not have enough uh, uh, tools, techniques, strategies, whatever, to actually know what it adds to but we can show that it actually does converge to something, which is kind of a weird concept. But this one actually does converge. Um, and I can actually evaluate it by just doing A over one minus R. First term was 12 um, and the ratio was two ninths. So one minus two ninths. So I can actually figure out, okay, so that's 12 over seven ninths. Um, and so then you could get like 108 over seven. So not only does it converge, we can actually find what it converges to. Um, now, part B, let's sort of uh, manipulate this in, in another, you know, in, in, a, in a similar way. So, um, so that's equal to the summation n equals zero to infinity. Um, so three to the two n plus one. So there's an extra three. Um, so I can think of it as three times three to the two n over four to the n. And then again, three to the two n would be like nine to the n. So now I have the series starting at zero, going to infinity of three times nine fourths to the n. So because my because this is a geometric series, I know that it diverges since r is greater than one. So um, I could say it diverges. The series diverges. Notice I'm talking about the series, right? The series, the summation diverges uh, because um, our absolute value of R as a geometric series is greater than one. So it diverges. Okay, now we're gonna get um, a very important test here, uh, the nth term test. And the nth term test helps us, uh, it's kind of like our first, it's kind of like our basic U substitution of integration, right? So the nth term test we should always look at because it's gonna help us decide right away if you diverge. Um, so if, if, if you look at a series, right? Um, and remember, so you're trying to analyze a series, that's the summation. So for any series, if your limit of the terms, right? So these are the terms. If the limit of the terms is not equal to zero, then you know your series diverges. There's no hope. 
Um, and that's kind of like, um, like think about that. If your terms aren't getting smaller, if your terms are consistently getting bigger, then there's no hope for the sum to actually go to anything because every term is a little bit bigger than the next term because they're not getting smaller. Um, so, so if the limit does, uh, the limit of the terms doesn't go to zero, then you know your series diverges. But here's, here's the thing you have to be very careful of. Um, this does not have any conclusion if you do go to zero. So uh, I, I would write this in like bright highlighter, right? So note, um, uh, the nth term test is inconclusive. So nth term test is inconclusive, inconclusive if uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero. Okay, so if 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 the limit of the terms equals zero, then this term this test tells us nothing. So it's kind of just like a introduction. It's like okay, take any series. Um, if your terms aren't going to zero, throw it out immediately, right? Um, but if they do go to zero, then you need a further test. Um, and the, why, why is it inconclusive? Um, because uh, if you look at the um, geometric series, uh, n equals one or zero, I guess, to infinity of one times, uh, let's say like one half to the n, like the one that we did, uh, we can actually figure that out. Um, we, we, you know, we, it's a geometric series. We already summed it up. We know that sum was equal to one. Uh, notice that the terms are going smaller because we start off with uh, one and then, oh, actually, if I start at zero, then um, this actually would go to two. Uh, so one plus one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth. So the terms are getting smaller. It sums up to two. Okay. But I know it sums up to two. I know the series converges, not because of the nth term test, but because of the geometric series uh, definition. But what if you look at this series? What about if I say zero to infinity of, um, uh, well, let's actually start at one because I don't want to divide by zero and have something undefined. But let's look at the harmonic series, one over n, right? So, so that's one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth. And we proved this honors pre-calc, and I can prove it again at some point in this, this semester. That 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 series diverges. Um, the terms don't get small enough fast enough, and therefore it's an infinite sum. However, the sequence of terms goes to zero, the series diverges. So again, if the sequence of terms goes to zero, the test is inconclusive for the entire summation. So just be clear on that. And again, you might need to stop this and rewind and hear that again, right? Because we, like, we're trying to analyze a summation. We're trying to analyze a series. So if you know something about the terms, if the terms themselves don't go to zero, then the sum diverges. But if the terms do go to zero, I, if the terms do go to zero, then your test is inconclusive. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. And then building on that, um, we're going to get lots of different tests. But the nth term tests, the nth term test will help us show a series diverges. And that's all it can do. It can just show that a series diverges. It cannot be used to show that a series converges. Okay, so let's um, start looking at um, determining determining if series converge or diverge. And notice it's the series, right? It's just it's it now it's the series. It's the entire sum. Now, uh, for some reason, you only have examples A, B, C in your in your book, um, but I've went ahead and provided you examples D, E, F, and G. So isn't that nice? You're welcome. Oh, except for oh, see, I made another mistake. I did. I I accidentally gave two G's the same. So I guess it's just through F. But that's okay. Um, okay, so um, we don't have a whole lot of tools to determine if series converge or diverge. Um, we know about a geometric series, we know about partial sums, and we know about the nth term test. That's all we have. So, um, so uh, like I'm, I'm gonna, you know, maybe just start with the nth term test. Do the, do the terms themselves go to zero? So if I say, well, what's the limit as n goes to infinity, not of, not of the entire, um, not of the whole series, but just of the terms n, 2n squared minus 3n plus 5 
over 5n squared plus 1. What's the limit of, of that expression? Because those those uh, every term can be represented by what's inside the summation. Well, um, it's quadratic over quadratic. You're approaching infinity. So that limit is equal to 2 fifths. Well, 2 fifths is not 0. So we, we can actually use the nth term test, right? The nth term test says if the limit of the terms does not equal zero, then the series diverges. So I would then make a conclusion. I would say the series, and you can just say like, you know, n equals zero to infinity of a sub n. That's fine. I understand. I'll understand. The series diverges by the nth term test, by nth term test test and 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 really that's all you need to show um you you like how do you know it diverged because i just showed that the the limit does not equal zero so there's there's some inherent understanding of what does the nth term test mean okay um so let's look at the the, the um part b um so we have a series and it's two to the n over n squared now um in my head, I already know, like, okay, who's winning, top or bottom, right? What, like, what, what's going to get bigger faster? Does an exponential number get bigger faster, or does a quadratic get bigger faster? And you know, there's it's no contest. The the uh, the exponential is gonna is gonna win. So I know that if I start looking at the terms themselves, they're not going to go to zero. They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm going to analyze the limit as n goes to infinity of what's inside, 2 to the n over n squared. Now, um, we might want to use L'Hopital's rule to justify this. Um, if you're having, you know, again, if you're if you're not too sure, um, so that equals by L'Hopital's rule, well, the derivative at the top would be the natural log of 2 times 2 to the n. So natural log of 2 times 2 to the n. But the derivative at the bottom is 2n. And that's still infinity over infinity. So if you wanted one more, you know, L'Hopital, so that's the natural log of 2 times the natural log of 2. So uh, it's the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of 2 times the natural log of 2 times 2 to the n over uh, 2. And now clearly that's going to equal infinity, right? That, right, because the because because of that guy right there. So 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 um, we in, we knew that the limit was equal to infinity, uh, and notice that infinity is not zero, right? So so again, we can use the exact same conclusion that the series diverges by the nth term test. And as long as you show me what the limit is in your work, then you just make that last concluding statement. So you say the series, and it's okay to abbreviate your series um, like this, like I'll understand, uh, diverges, oops, diverges by the nth term test. Excellent. Okay. Now, uh, next example, um, like uh, cosine of n. So we, we're only letting n be natural numbers, uh, you know, um, so, or actually counting numbers starting at 0, uh, or I guess an integer, a uh, whole number, that's what I'm thinking of. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So, but thinking about the cosine itself, you know, the cosine, you're going to get sort of a disconnected or a discontinuous dotted wave, but it's still... Um, oscillating. So I could again use the nth term test because the limit as n goes to infinity of just cosine of n in general um, uh, it does not exist, right? It, 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 it's DNA. It, 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 um, it uh, diverges, right? Death by oscillation. And since that does not equal zero, we know that the series itself must um, must diverge. So I get again, I can say series diverges by nth term test. Series diverges by nth term test. So really, since this is about the only test that we have, um, you know, if, if, you know, it's, 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 you know, going to be one of the most common things we're going to see a series, analyze it, show that the limit of the terms does not equal zero. Okay, now um, let's look at this next example here, n factorial over n plus 2 factorial. Um, and so, and, uh, you know, let, let's think about that series. Well, um, 
part of the reason I put this on here is because um, I want us to get used to like manipulating factorials. N factorial is just N times, you know, like times N minus one times N minus two, right? So, and so is N plus two factorial. So in, in essence, um, so N equals zero to infinity. So this N factorial um, in the top, I'm going to leave, but N plus two factorial, well, that's N plus two times N plus one and then times N factorial. So if I just like kind of look at the first two terms here, um, so the first two terms, um, and then I get an N factorial, guess what? That's going to knock that out. So it's sort of like a telescoping sequence from honors precalc in a way, um, but actually it becomes a telescoping sequence um, because we we could we could easily break it down into its partial fractions. Now here's the thing: if I look at the limit of the terms, right? So if I say, okay, well, what's I'm going to come down here? So what's the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus two times n plus one? Well, the limit of the terms is zero, but that doesn't tell me anything about um, about the series itself. So the nth term test does not apply. This is not a geometric series, so that does not apply. Um, so right now, I, I I'm inconclusive. Um, you know, and 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 that my point is that um, you know we're going to learn other techniques to show and to find out exactly what happens. Now this this series I will tell you actually does converge. It has nothing to do with the nth term test. It has everything to do with that it's it could be rewritten as partial fractions, um, and it's a telescoping series. So it's something that you actually did in honors precalc. But the I wanted to give you an example that the nth term test is inconclusive here. Okay, um, and and so then uh, let's look at example E. Um, so sine of n over n squared plus four. So um, you know again I could think about okay well what's the limit of uh, the terms as n goes to infinity of just sine of n over n squared plus four. Now I I like this example because it it's going to illustrate the sine of n. Um, that's just oscillating between one and negative one, right? So, so um, that the again the denominator here being quadratic uh, is gonna is really gonna take over, and so um, the limit here is going to equal zero. Um, and so the thing is, once again, um, this tells us nothing, right? It tells us nothing uh, about what the series does, even though the sequence of terms goes to zero. So the nth term test, again, is inconclusive. However, the sequence of terms does go to zero because this, this up here is sort of acting like, like it's bouncing between negative one and positive one. Um, but the denominator is going to get very large, very fast. So what ends up happening is you just sort of like hover over like the uh, x axis. Okay. Um, so two examples um, that we cannot conclude anything about the series. Um, and I wanted to show you those simply because I want to show you that there is a limitation on that nth term test. Okay. Okay. One more uh, example, F or G, <laughs> I guess, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'll, I'll go down here. So let's look at the limit of the terms. The limit as N goes to infinity of just the, t the sequence of terms. So n squared plus 2n plus 4. So this limit, um, since like even though there's a, a, a square here, it's under the square root. So it's really going to behave like just a linear factor. So this thing's going to behave like 3n over just an n. Um, technically absolute value of n, but still you're going to positive infinity. So you already knew it was positive. So um, the the 2n plus 4 becomes negligible. And so this limit is equal to 3. Well, 3 is not equal to 0. So I now can actually use the nth term test to show that the series itself diverges. Um, so I could say the series um, of terms uh, diverges by the nth term test by nth term. And so if you're going to use this on the AP exam, if you're going to use the nth term test on the AP exam, then you have to show the limit. Um, and it's not going to be a hard limit usually, um, but you have to show it. 
Now, occasionally you might need to use L'Hopital's rule, um, and you know that's okay. Um, but um, you know, if you show the limit does not equal zero, then it diverges by the nth term test. If you show it equals zero, then it's inconclusive. And just to give you kind of just again a caution for tonight's homework, for this homework you know that you're going to do for this section, make sure you read the question carefully. Is it looking at the sequence of terms or is it looking at the entire series, which is a sum, right? So is it the sequence of terms or is it the sum of terms? Um, and, and you know, no, no kind of like, well, what are, what are you analyzing if that does go to zero? Terms can go to zero and the sequence can go to zero and it can converge. That's great. But if it's asking about the series itself, the summation as in its entirety, uh, then that's not always going to be um, conclusive for, uh, for, for that particular problem.